we have the Vegas Golden Knights against the Winnipeg Jets. And remember what I said last offseason or last last year about the Knights? What did you say? I said the only reason they missed the playoffs was because of how injured they were. And, well, lo and behold, that proved to be the case throughout the course of the season. It did. Um, and Vegas, again, they were pretty injured this year as well. And they made the coaching change that I think they needed to make, regardless of all the injuries from a year ago. I think that they needed to change a head coach. And they bring in Bruce. Cassidy, who had his issues in the Boston Bruins locker room, but I think that was one of the greatest head coaching changes on both sides in NHL history. Jim Montgomery going to the Bruins, having a historic season, and Bruce Cassidy going to Vegas and leading them to the Pacific Division title. Um, so, yeah, look, Vegas, I think they're a stacked group. I think on defense, Alex Petrangelo is great. Shea Theodore has transformed into a number one defenseman. Uh, of course, up front, they get Mark Stone back. What kind of Mark Stone are we going to get coming off of that back surgery? Um, I'm not entirely sure. Jack Eichel as well. He had a pretty decent season. I think landed around 70 points in around 65 plus games. So more than a point per game player, but I still think you'd want a little bit more out of Jack Eichel. William Carlson had a good year as well. Even depth guys like Brett Howden, as much as we wouldn't like to admit it, have <laughs> had a decent year for the Vegas Golden Knights too. But again, what concerns me with Vegas, Shane? Another a Rangers legend. <laughs> <laughs> what concerns me with Vegas Shades, exactly what concerned me with the Seattle Kraken is the goaltending. And right now it's Lauren Brossois and Jonathan Quick. Of course, Logan Thompson, his uh, availability for the postseason is uh, a little topsy-turvy. He was dealing with an injury at the end of the year. He probably will start game one against the Winnipeg Jets, I would imagine. But if they have to go to Jonathan Quick or they have to go to Lauren Brossois, that, that is what concerns me. But the entirety of their group otherwise, Bruce Cassidy is a great coach. They have so much depth on the blue line and up front. They didn't even mention Alex Petrangelo as well on the back end. Young guys like Paul Cotter, um, you know, Teddy Bluger, who they acquired at the trade deadline. Nick Waugh, who played well for them. Chandler Stevenson, Phil the Thrill Kessel, Jonathan Marshall, uh, Riley Smith. So, again, Ivan Barbashev, who they got from the St. Louis Blues. So there's a ton of depth on this team. So if their goaltending can stand up, uh, you know, I think they'll do well in the playoffs. But I'll hold my prediction just for a moment. All right. And because you mentioned the guys that they brought in, like Barbashev, like Teddy Bluger, like Jonathan Quick, let's not forget that they traded away Max Pacioretty last offseason for mm -hmm. rest in peace, future considerations. <laughs> I always love saying that. And it's unbelievable. Even, what happened? It's unbelievable because they traded both Mark andre Fleury and Max Pacioretty for nothing. It, and it, it didn't remember. bite them. It didn't no. bite them. Max Pacioretty's been out ever since they moved them. And Mark andre Fleury uh, faced that severe regression that, you know, again, he came off of the Vesna Trophy winning season. And then he's had some uh, really uh, – you know, downswings in his career. So again, it's really uh, amazing that it hasn't bit them in the behind, but continue. Yes. yes. And you brought up Mark Stone being out for the Knights again, which is just unfortunate, but he's back. Oh, he is back. Yeah. So he had back surgery and now they're bringing him back for the playoffs. And again, it's the LTIR controversy where they uh, bring him back right at the start of the playoffs and but again, if you the counter argument to that is if you look at who Vegas brought in at the deadline, it's not like they brought in eight and a half million dollar Timo Meyer. You know, they brought in Ivan Barbashev. You know, they still have to make it work under the cap, but it's not like there was some serious cap maneuvering there. But yeah, Stone is back and should play game one against Winnipeg. So speaking of the moves that the Knights made, the Jets made. I mean, they really just made two minor moves. They swapped a lower roster, a depth roster player for Vladislav Nemesnikov, and they brought in Nino Niederreiter, who you and I were both raving about that trade for them when it happened. But now I'm going back to my good old, how did they finish the season trend? The Winnipeg Jets finished the season 14-14-2 in their final 30 stumbling into the playoffs where they almost got caught by the Nashville Predators, which I wanted to see so badly, but it didn't happen. And the Knights, surprisingly, in their final 22 games, went 16-3-3, which I was shocked at because, I mean, we've already talked about the Oilers and the Avalanche and how they finished the season. <clears throat> Excuse me. The Knights were right behind them in pace-wise 
which I didn't even, I didn't hear anything about this. So when I saw that and did my re- my independent research of just looking back at the schedule, I was just like, holy crap. Now, I will say this, which I should have said at the beginning of the episode. My games may, may be off by a game or two in the win or loss column, but I did the best I could on making notes as quickly as I could. But it's time for the official predictions. I think that the Winnipeg Jets will take this to seven games, but ultimately I see the Knights winning in seven. I also think that the Winnipeg Jets are going to take this to seven games, but I think that Winnipeg is going to win. Interesting. I think the Jets are going to win the series. I think they have the best goaltender in the West. Um, Right up there with Jake Ottinger. I really think it's a, coin toss of who you like better, whether you like Hellebuck or Ottinger. Um, But I think a hot goaltender can really lead you places. And yeah, it does concern me. I'm not going to lie how hot Vegas was down the stretch. Exactly. You know, um, precisely as you displayed the uh, statistics in the last number of games to end the regular season. Um, But again, I look at this Winnipeg Jets team and there's a lot of pieces of it that I like. I think Kyle Connor and Nikolai Ehlers, I think that winger pairing, you know, again, those are two of the best wingers in the league and very underrated, both of them. Here, yes. Dubois, as much as we like to talk about him as a locker room cancer, he's quietly having one of his best years of his career. You know, he's having a nice 63 point season in 73 games. You know, a lot of people wrote him off as like a mid second line center. He's produced 24 years old, still young player. Of course, Mark Shifley as well. He struggled a little bit this year, 68 points in 81 games, but he's still a top line guy. Uh, Vladislav Nemestikov, that's your second line center. Concerns me a little bit. Blake Wheeler, you have veteran leadership in that forward group. I love Lowry, Niederreiter, uh, and Appleton. I think that's a great third line. Morgan Barron, Kevin Stenland. Um, and Saku Menelainen, um, that's your fourth line. So again, you know, there's some depth there as well. And Josh Morrissey on the back end is having the best year of his career. Yes. And again, he was the front runner for the Norris Trophy for the first quarter of the season or so until his play kind of dropped off a little bit offensively specifically. So I think that the Winnipeg Jets have a great team. I'm worried about the Vegas Golden Knights, the way that they've played at home and uh, their goaltending depth. Uh, so that's why I have Winnipeg winning the series in seven. And again, I predicated my predictions before the episode started with you shades by saying that there was going to be a good amount of uh, surprises. And that's my first one, the Winnipeg Jets beating the uh, first seeded Vegas Golden Knights. Well, you definitely surprised me. Now, the only reason I'm picking the Knights over the Jets is because this Jets team strikes me as last year's stars team where they didn't really do anything of note to stand out heading into the playoffs last year. And then Jake Ottinger went off where they still lost in a game seven overtime. Fair enough. Fair enough. So that's what I'm basing my prediction on. So the first one we differ on, you got the Jets in seven. I got the Knights in seven. That's right. 